clothes end up in Cantamanto, starting as bales from the global north. Now these bales are carried on the heads of women known as Kaye headquarters in the market and are taken to retailers. They have opened up and your clothes are sold to many people. That's after a lot of upcycling, repairs and dyeing has happened. What happens to the rest of the clothes that cannot be sold? That's where we come in. This is the All Foundation's Material Research and Development Lab. First, we do collect materials from Kantamantu. The material we collect from Kantamantu are the unwanted ones which the vendors in Kantamantu market can sell. The materials end up into our river bodies, our gutters, our landfills. All those things are not good for the environment. That's the reason why we collect the material waste from Kantamantu. After sourcing on the unwanted waste, we then transport it to the warehouse by pickup truck. We sort them by colors, then we weigh them. We then send it to the bill press and press them to a very small size. After bailing, we move to the next process, which is shredding. If you hear away, we put materials that we use to produce fiberboard, but before that, we don't have any idea of how we go cut them down into pieces. We go to a place opposite our warehouse called Galloway, which they build this kind of machines, which come from the scraps, and they used to build a lot of machines like the corn mill, fufu machines, hammer mill, coconut grinders and stuff. And my people and I decided to visit that place to be able to collaborate with most of the artisans or the fabricators over there to come out with a result of making a small prototype that can be able to what, a shred or granulate or break down this t-shirt into smaller t-tools that will be used for fiber boards and other production as well. We realized that we can now advance it to a bigger one, which is your mighty shredder which is also coming out from the scrap materials from the same Galloway market. We end up getting a second machine, which is a second-hand machine, which is the granulator. This makes it more finer. And together with this giant shredder machine and the granulator, we're able to achieve what we are looking for. After shredding and granulating, we start with the fiberboard production process. <laughs> Now, the shredded material is poured into the dough mixer, in goes the glue and some additives for different reasons. The glue we are using currently is cassava glue, but we are also researching other glues. The reason we are using cassava glue is because one, it is natural, and two, it's readily available in our market. We go round, round, round mix to form a dough. The formed dough is then transferred onto frames and hand molded by our very beautiful, wonderful apprentices. Then transferred into a dehydrator for dry. And that's how fiberboard is made. Spectacular, isn't it? This is what our cassava boards look like when they come out of the oven. They're at full dimension, uh, oversized, so that we can trim away the rough material from the edges to make them square and straight and more suitable as a material. When the materials come out of our ovens, they still have a rough texture. The edges aren't straight or square, so one of the things we do here on the Creative Workshop side is run them through our table saw to clean up the edges and make a more suitable and smooth uniform material to be able to make things from, such as speakers, um, acoustic insulation panels, as well as prototypes for small-scale home goods, such as lamps and room dividers. Um, this is the side of our space where creative development starts uh, once the material development side of the process has completed. And so the next time you have a tear or a stain in your clothing, before you decide to put it in a donation bin, think of what you can use it for. Cotton t-shirts are great for making mops, super absorbent too. Or you can make fiberboard. 